Hi there everybody, I'm Dr. Beth Innes and today I have with me my trusty uh, rascally sidekick Andrew. This is my own dog from home um, and he's going to help me demonstrate how um, we use the Digitherm machine which is a um, way to use thermography um, or heat, a camera that detects heat in order to um, help zero in on pain and inflammation. So um, what we'll do first is we'll do kind of a, an example of what it looks like when your pet comes in to have their Digitherm um, run. And then I will show you some examples of some images afterwards and the, the kind of information we can get from it. All right, shall we, Sam? We shall. There Sam is behind the camera. She's gonna transition to um, running the Digitherm machine. Sorry guys, if I can figure out how to flip the camera. Oh, there we go. All right. So the machine itself is a camera that is attached to basically a tablet. And sometimes the tablet gives us a hard time. So just bear with us if we um, have to um, restart it at any point. Sam, will you just put the machine in view so people could kind of see um, so it looks like that, fancy camera. You wanna show them the other side too where the actual lens is? There we go. So no <laughs> sedation needed, nothing, nothing special except for right before they come in, we actually can't touch them too much um, because we don't wanna put our heat onto their heat. And we also change their collar and leash so we just have, hi there. Um, so we just have like a little bit of fabric on there, which will be detected by the Digitherm, but it's better than the whole kit and caboodle with collar and leash and all that jazz or harness. All right. Okay. So all we do is we ask them to stand in certain positions. Um, Sam is going to start with taking a picture of um, Andrew from the side. And so if I was a nice mama, I would have remembered to bring treats for him, but I, I know he's... Hmm, usually pretty good. So I'm going to use some gloves. We have this backdrop up because the um, electrical outlets actually kind of um, affect the pictures. There you go, mister. These are kind of just ski gloves so that my heat is not in the picture. I'm going to start to go that way again. All right, we're just going to move you. We're just going to move you. So this is all it is. It's a little confusing to them because usually when we're asking them to do this stuff, we're asking them to S-I-T or go D-O-W-N. I'm not gonna tell them that just in case he does it. Are my feet in the way, Sam? Are we okay? Um, they are, but I can try to, there we go. So she's looking at him from the side, getting the fore limbs and then the back limbs. And we'll try to do it as symmetrical as we can okay. for each side. All right, handsome guy. As you can see, he's very adorable. <laughs> he is built a little bit long, and his forelimbs are a little bit um, probably less than desired in terms of the way that they're constructed. So I'm always worried a little bit about his mid-back and his shoulders and his elbows. I think at some point may give him a problem, but he's only five. There we go. Oh, and Sam is actually <laughs> renowned for her excellent pictures. She actually, we had one of them featured in an article of the Digitherm People. So it kind of does take a quick, she has to be pretty quick about what she does when she takes it so that it's, as symmetrical as possible. Do you want to look at me? There we go. All right. And then she always takes a picture of the face, partly because it's useful and partly because it's so adorable that we like to look at them. There. <laughs> and here's a bum shot, but we're looking, and often we have to take, we have to take a couple pictures because if we have a wagging tail, it covers. Sorry, Sam. It's okay. And of course, when it comes to being flexible, if we have a patient who has a hard time, um, you didn't do a talk view. If we have a patient who has a hard time standing, we'll do some sitting. We won't make them stand the whole time. Because he's a young gun, he can do a pretty good job. Choo -choo. Choo -choo. Over here. 
beautiful. And she's gonna kind of take the lower back and then she's gonna take an upper back and sometimes we get, we get part of the neck, but sometimes it's hard. Perfect, and then for our last one, we can do this cool one where we have them stand still, all four feet, and then we'll have him move, oh, I messed it up. I think you're still good. Okay, tell me when. And then we'll have a move and we'll take a picture of his feet and see which legs he's, ah, oh, oh no, you can try it. Okay, which ones he's bearing the most weight on. So it's kind of like a force analysis. Oh, that's pretty good. We can get a little bit of information from that. All right, perfect. Nice job, sir. Excellent work. And then that's all there is to it for the actual Digitherm exam. Um, and what we often will do is it will kind of give us a, do you wanna, there we go. It will kind of give us a, um, some insight into what areas we might wanna treat or any diagnostic um, things that we might need to do next. Okay, so, oh, look at his mouth is up in there, that's cute. All right, um, so here are some images. Let's start with, let's do this one, this cute face. Okay, so here is the actual photograph and then we're gonna do, um, turn some colors on. So in this picture, we can see his dashing googly eye there that Sam caught so well is one of the hottest parts of his body. That's normal. Um, if we change the kind of temperature range a little bit, we can change it all the way here. So that is not gonna be as helpful. We're gonna want the more colors that we can see here, the better. So the coolest parts of his body are generally gonna be the tip of the nose and the tip of the feet. We've noticed um, that a lot of times in the winter, Sam and I can tell how um, cold those feet get from being outside. So I'm gonna make it a little bit more contrasty. So I wanna make it a little bit, let's see, so let's do, let's say 87. Let's see what that looks like. That's too much. And this might be a little hard because I'm doing, oops, goodness. Doing a little bit more of, um, I'm doing his whole body, not zeroing in, but this is probably gonna be as good as it gets. Okay, so in this picture, we can tell his feet are a little bit on the cool side down here. That's probably pretty normal for this time of year. He's a little bit, um, this isn't a perfect view just because it's not straight on. So in this view, this area looks, his left shoulder um, looks a little bit more um, hot. So we can kind of take that into account, but I'm gonna actually change this so I'm going to make it apply to all the images if it will listen to me oh, it's singing and then I'm going to make the settings the same too okay so in a picture like this here we go here we go um, this is a great picture so we want to see a little bit of blue here so we know that we have the full spectrum. This is just gonna kind of give us a little bit of a sine curve, I guess that is. So here in this picture, we can kind of compare what is actually happening in his face. His head is up here, rump is down here, we're looking from above. So in this picture, this all looks pretty normal. Back here, we start to see a little bit of, of red and yellow, which is indicating heat. Um, up on his kind of mid back area, the area that I said that I tend to worry about a little bit. And then back here is interesting too because we're getting some inflammation. This is right behind his shoulder blades. And I would say, as Sam can attest, we see a ton of trigger points and inflammation behind those shoulder blades, especially for those <clears throat> that tend to jump from high heights and hurt their necks. And also those that have any forelimb problems um, or are using their forelimbs extra. So that's kind of some good information. If we were going to do an acupuncture treatment or 
probably for him even more likely a chiropractic treatment. I'm going to notice what um, his vertebral area is around here and I bet there would be some good adjustments to do here. So those are things that I might find with my hands anyways, but this is pretty good information going forward. So the other things we can look at are things from the side. Let's see. Let's look back here. So this is looking at his um, rear leg. You can see his feet almost disappear here, and that's what I mean in the winter. We really see them disappear. There should be a little bit of whiteness and a little bit of redness, redness around the knee, but in this case, this is a little bit more than I would like to see. So, Drew, we have some work to do, you and I. Um, but what we're also going to do is we're going to want to compare sides because there's always going to be some variation in temperature, but we're going to make sure that things look about the same. So in this picture, his actual kind of his groin area is always going to light up bright. That's just how much heat is there. Um, and but but there is a little bit of normal kind of consistent between the sides inflammation or heat, I should say, um, in that we call it the stifle, but in the knee area. Let's see, what else can we look at here? This one is going to be important for him too, and there are some times when we do our follow-up exams, we're going to do, focus in on certain particular areas, but as you can see, with a, a dog of his kind of shape, he has like kind of like a little bit of like a bowing out effect in his forelimbs, and so I'm always going to be paying close attention to what's happening here. There is a little bit more inflammation than we would like to see, a little bit more white on this side and a little bit of red here. Um, also with some animals, if they have some pretty like significant um, inflammation um, or some pinchiness in any of the um, nerves coming out from their spinal cord, we can see some patches of cool areas and we can tell a lot as much by the cool areas as we can tell by the um, by the hot areas. Um, let's see. So when we find these areas of inflammation or heat, um, we can be pretty assured, especially if there's one if there's one side that seems particularly more hot than the other, that there could be some pain there and that's something that we're gonna work on. If we see an area that is really cold, um, we can be pretty assured that there is not enough blood supply getting to that area and we're gonna to wanna to work on it a different way, whether it's Sam doing massage, me doing chiropractic, Dr. Jenny doing acupuncture, um, but there's many different things that we're gonna draw conclusions about. This is something where we also want to make sure that we are comparing the images from the last um, pictures that we took of that animal because the changes are also going to be important. Um, but it's nice because it's a real-time image. So this is what his body looks like right now. I can't draw a conclusion based on this, what he, his body is going to look like in the future or it used to look like. Um, so even if we did this um, imaging, and then I did an acupuncture treatment or a chiropractic treatment or both, it's gonna look different afterwards. So we could also do some comparisons that way. But as you can see, not too stressful, Andrew. <laughs> um, and so it's something that can be very, it's very non-invasive, so we like that about it, and it is um, pretty easy and pretty quick. I would say, Sam, it usually takes us no more than 15 minutes yeah. um, for every exam, and that's a complete exam. Um, sometimes we'll just do little tidbits here and there to check in on body parts. But as we know, it's all connected, so we want to check that out. All right, so if anybody has any questions, let us know. You can write them underneath um, in the little comment section, or you can email us, or you can call us. Um, our email is dreamteam at sleepydog.vet and we're always happy to answer questions. Our next Facebook Live is going to be how animals communicate pain to us and that will be our next one in about a month. So we'll put that date up soon. All right, thanks everybody. Have a great day.